So if you are somebody who just struggles to talk to people, right, especially somebody that you are attracted to, then this episode is going to be for you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Danny, and I'm a self-esteem and love coach that works with gay and bisexual men um, in all matters of self-esteem and love, and you are listening in or watching the Deep Penetration podcast. So if this is your first time watching, listening in, then welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, then welcome back. So again, don't want to waste any time. Try not to waste any time, right? Because I know everybody's time is precious. Today, we are talking about communication. And look, I know communication is not the sexiest topic when it comes to relationship dynamics and what makes a relationship work. Everyone always wants to talk about attraction and intimacy and sex and connection, but the reality is none of those things would exist without communication. Like really think about it, right? So if you are attracted to someone at some point, you'll need to go up to them and talk to them if you want it to go anywhere, right? Intimacy by definition is closeness, whether it's emotional or physical. And in order to get close with someone, it involves shared experiences, thoughts, dreams, likes, dislikes, and the list goes on and on and on and on. How do you come to find those things out, right? Through communication. To have mind-blowing sex, right? To have really good sexual chemistry and com connection, communication is key. Expressing what you want from your partner and listening to what your partner wants through verbal and nonverbal cues can take your relationship to the next level. And finally, connection, right? How the hell do you expect to connect with someone if you don't even communicate with them? So, I mean, honestly, do you believe me now? At this point, when I tell you that communication is one of the most important things, and if your communication sucks, so will your relationship. And I work with men all the time that struggle to speak their mind, to set boundaries, to express their needs and their expectations, and just generally speak up when they need to. So, you know, if this is you, a big part of this struggle is going to be understanding that growing up queer, growing up gay, growing up bisexual, however you call it, right, that's up to you, it led to a lot of issues in regards to being able to communicate and having that voice and the fear of expressing who you truly are for fear of rejection, uh, rejection of judgment, of criticism, all of those things played a major role. And for me, I know that that's something that I definitely experienced. Is it something that you've experienced, right? Have you ever really sat down and thought about it? Because like I said, I know I sure as hell have. I grew up in a Latino household with a dad who had old world values when it came to men and their roles in society. I went to a private Catholic school until I graduated high school and I was bullied all through elementary and middle school, right? So triple whammy there. That basically means I didn't have a voice for a really, really, really long time. And even to this day, when I'm anxious or stressed or I feel the tension in my throat, I, I, I clam up. It's hard for me to express myself sometimes. You know, I correlate that to my inability to, I don't know, I guess, I guess for me, I would say that it's, it's something that I have actively worked on for a really long time. Um, it's something that I'm still currently working on. So by no means, I want you to think that I am like some professional communicator. Do I think I'm really good at communicating at this point? Absolutely 100%, but I'm not 100% all the way there. I'm not perfect. I still have my moments. I still struggle. I still um, can be pretty introverted at times. I can still be avoidant in certain situations. But what really matters is, number one, my ability to reflect on those things. And number two, to be able to overcome the challenge of not wanting to communicate and to communicate. That's going to be very important. You know, I... I we all struggle to communicate at some point or another. So it's not that I'm faulting you for that, but it's your decision of whether you want to work on it or not. And now that I'm in a position that I'm in a very public arena, right? So YouTube, TikTok, all of those things, it requires me to speak my truth 
and my mind. So I don't want to say that it's my expectation, but I would say that I hope it's something that you come to realize is a huge priority, a big priority for you if you want to be able to to grow as a person and get past some of these things that are blocking you. Communication in general has been the biggest struggle um, in life. But for me, you know, I, I don't know, like I'll be damned if I allow myself to repress my voice again. That's just, that's my choice, right? I don't want to ever be in that position again. And the inability to communicate caused me a lot of pain growing up. So once I was able to embrace it and learn how to navigate the difficult parts, it opened up a whole new world of, of self-confidence, of self-love, of, of the ability to have healthy relationships, both platonically and romantically. So what does healthy and unhealthy communication look like in a same-sex relationship? And I think it's a really good question to ask. I think it's something that a lot of people don't really think about. Um, I think we can generally say, oh yeah, this is good or this is bad, but specifically like what is the difference between good communication, healthy communication, and bad communication? So when it comes to healthy communication patterns, um, it's really important that we focus on clear and open communication. So some of those things are active listening, right? Um, empathy and validation, setting boundaries, and some of the unhealthy communication patterns would be things like stonewalling somebody and avoidance. Um, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which was expressed by um, John Gottman, it basically means you are ignoring or evading your partner, passive aggressiveness, which we see a lot in a lot of relationships. Um, it's really important that you are hyper aware of being passive aggressive. And the reason why I say that is because I see that so much amongst um, relationships in general, but specifically with queer men, with gay and bisexual men, there's this kind of like cattiness to us, right? This sassiness to us. And I think a big part of that is because our experiences growing up and experiencing bully and feeling repressed and like we can't be ourselves, there are certain defense mechanisms that we created for ourselves. There are certain um, behaviors that we adopted in order to be able to set ourselves apart from people who were trying to harm us or hurt us. And one of the ways that we do that, I know for myself, is being passive aggressive, right? Having that sharp tongue, um, doing it in a way where if the person isn't really paying attention, they wouldn't even realize that you were sliding them. Um, so if you allow yourself to continue to communicate in that way and to interact with people in that way, whether it's in a dating environment with friends in a relationship, you're going to find it incredibly difficult to have a healthy relationship long term, right? And some of the, the best things that you can do, some of the recommendations that I have when it comes to kind of curving uh, that aggression is... When you are in a moment and you are upset about something or you're angry about something or you're frustrated about something, it's really important to bring awareness to what you're feeling in that moment, number one. And number two, what triggered that feeling? Was it something that person said? Is it how that person acted? Is it what they didn't do that caused you to feel some kind of way, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is do not react in that moment. Sometimes it is better to just be silent. And some might even take that as being passive aggressive, right? Because you're not saying anything and therefore the person doesn't really know what they did wrong or whatever the case may be. But sometimes it's better to just be silent and be reflective. And if there is a need to communicate because let's say your partner doesn't understand where you're, why you're upset or what's going on um, or the person that you're upset with doesn't know what's going on and they're asking you what's happening, you can just let them know, hey, something bothered me. I'm kind of processing it right now. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I'll deal with it and then I'll circle back with you and have a conversation with you about it. 
that is the best way to handle a situation like that, as opposed to just kind of letting your emotions get the best of you. Now, look, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not something that you're going to be able to change like a light switch. It's going to take some time and it's going to take practice and it's going to be uncomfortable when you initially do it, because what you're doing is that you are changing your, your behavior. You're changing the way that you would approach a situation that in the past served to protect you against something that you felt or saw as a threat. But you're never going to start to change that behavior until you try, number one, and until you actually see that in doing that, the situation is far less dramatic than it usually is. That's going to be really important. Another thing here is blame and criticism, right? Um, blame and criticism is something that can damage a relationship um, from the inside out. It is very easy for us to blame the other person when something goes wrong. Um, and I think that that happens quite often, particularly with um, gay and bisexual men, because this there's this underlying fear of of not being good enough or rejection or being less than and therefore if we do something that is our fault we seek to be validated for our actions and therefore we need to blame the other person so we feel like we are in the right for what we did. It's a defense mechanism. It's almost like that kind of middle school, high school situation where like, you know, you did something wrong, or like there was like some drama in the schoolyard. And <laughs> you were so afraid that your arch nemesis would would get everybody against you. So you needed to get everybody on your side before that happened. You had to tell everybody your story before that happened. You needed to paint that person in a negative light. And what if that person didn't do anything? What if that person didn't go and try to get a bunch of people against you? And now you're the person who's sitting here being the dramatic one, right? I think that we learn from a young age that sometimes it's better to put the blame on somebody else than to accept the blame or at least our part in that situation. So if you plan on having a healthy relationship, if you plan on having a sustainable relationship, you better learn to take accountability. You better learn to understand that for some things, sure, maybe you can blame your partner for, for something that went wrong, right? But at the end of the day, you also have to acknowledge that you might have a part in that as well. Um, and expressing those things is going to be important and doing it in a healthy way. And if that is something that you struggle with, if you are not great with that, um, reach out to me, right? Let's have a conversation about it. I am currently in the process of creating a communication guideline. It's not going to be anything super long. It'll just be, you know, a free gift that I will provide for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. If you are looking for, um, more, I guess, step-by-step -step ways of communicating in the best way. Um, I guess I can kind of touch upon some of those things now, right? So what would be the best ways of overcoming some communication challenges? And I think that the first one is self-awareness, right? Self-awareness um, is the starting point for improving communication. Um, I highly recommend doing reflective exercises and journaling to try to understand your communication style while you're feeling the way that you're feeling and all of those things. I think another great thing to do is to seek some form of professional help. So whether that's in the form of a therapist, a coach, um, a person who communicates in or are, um, what am I trying to say? A person who specializes in communication. Um, and can teach you the right ways of communicating your feelings. Um, I think it's so interesting because as a coach, of course, I always want to like market myself and be like, you should go with a coach. But sometimes um, therapy is the best way to go because there might be underlying reasons for why you're struggling to communicate, right? That are far deeper than what is seen on the surface. And usually um, when I work with clients, depending on what the situation is and what um, I'm working with, I will usually recommend um, 
a therapist as well, right? So that you have a team of individuals who are helping you to grow and develop. The other thing here is just practicing active communication. Um, and one of the best ways that you can practice active communication is, for example, real-time communication. That's one. Let's just say let's just say that. So if you are in a situation with somebody, if you are in a situation with your partner, if you're upset about something, express how you're feeling in that moment, but be very cognizant of how you're expressing that. Um, because oftentimes what happens is that we have a tendency of repressing and suppressing our feelings, and then it comes out in other ways in the relationship. We explode, we get angry, we get upset, we are passive aggressive. Um, so learn to acknowledge how you're feeling in that moment and be very clear and concise with your communication, right? So an example that I like to give people is you want to focus on four things. What you observe, what you think, what you feel, and what you need. Those are the only four things that you need to, to take into consideration um, when you are trying to communicate in a healthy way with your partner. So an example of that would be, let's say for, let's say you come home and there's dishes in the sink and you're pissed off about the dishes, but it's not really about the dishes, right? It's because you feel a lack of support It's because you feel like your partner's not really helping you with other things. The way that you would communicate that is, hey, I noticed there was dishes in the sink. I don't think that you did that intentionally, but I will be honest with you and tell you that it makes me feel like I'm not being supported because they worked really long hours and I'm really tired. I would appreciate it if the next time I came home, you were able to have the dishes in the dishwasher. And that's it, right? Very clear, cut and dry, black and white. You don't need to add any gray into that because that's when people start to kind of miscommunicate and can interpret things in the wrong way. The other thing here is constructive feedback, right? Um, letting your partner know what works for you and what doesn't work for you in regards to communication. But in order for you to do that, you have to know your communication style to begin with. So a challenge or a exercise that I have for you is the next time that you are, let's say, struggling to communicate with a friend a family member, your significant other, ask them what they need from you in regards to communication. Ask them how they receive information. Ask them if the way that you are communicating with them, um, they are understanding, right? Because it's so easy for us to go, why aren't you understanding me? I don't get it. It's a you problem. It's not a me problem. Ask them. And that might open the door to them asking you, which is the first step to healthy communication. Um, again, look, I know that communication is not the sexiest topic. I don't know any other way of making communication sexy short of me sitting here butt ass naked talking about communication. Um, but even then, I don't even know if some of you would find that sexy. <laughs> um, but it's important. That's all I have to say about it, right? It's super important. Um, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, ugh, you don't really have to do it, but you need to do it. Um, and then we can get to all the sexy, fun, exciting stuff later. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Please let me know what you thought about it. Let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. Um, yes, I recognize that I probably went off and ranted for a little bit, but that's okay. It's a podcast. That's what it's all about. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Um, we're going to talk about some amazing things this season. So thank you for joining me. Um, on this season of the Deep Penetration Podcast. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.